Hello and welcome to Cannabis Talk 101, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. My name is Blue. Alongside me is Mr. Joe Grande, but he's not here today. <laughs> we have Tony Kasai from Financial Fridays. Tony, let us know who we got on the show, babe. Y'all, listen up. I don't know. Where are you at? What you doing? Who are you with? What's your name? What's your con? What's your <laughs> cell number? But <laughs> what day of the week is it? Where is it over here, Blue? It's Financial Friday, That's baby. That's what it is, man. Welcome <laughs> to Cannabis Talk 101, who you know is the number one source for yes. everything cannabis, guys. I'm Tony K. I'm, thank you for listening to our show, heard all around the world in over 180 countries. You guys, make sure you check out the website. You know what that is, Cannabis Talk 101. While you're there, check out our sexy new magazine. Oh, we got pallets yes. of them just landed. Congratulations on that, brother. Oh, yeah. You know? Thank you. Feel free to call us anytime. Leave us a message at 1 800 420 1980. Don't forget to connect with us. Our IG pages are at Cannabis Talk 101. My boy Blue is at the number one, Christopher Wright. Hello. My podcast papa, as I like to call him, Joe Grande. I do miss him. Yeah, I thought he was going to be here. You know, I told him I'd do good. Ryan was a little bit late, but that's all right. It's, oh, is that what it was? <laughs> ah, that's why he bailed. Uh, Joe Grande. That makes sense. He, he's got kids. It ain't even personal. It was just kids. It was the kids, right? <laughs> the kid and the dog, too, you know? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Whatever. Joe Grande is at Joe His Grande loss. 52. <laughs> You can find me at, as always, the inside investor, brother. Now, y'all know I created Financial Fridays because after 20 years of being on Wall Street, I got sick and tired of seeing the little guy get screwed over, guys. You know what I want to do? I want to empower you to get your mind right and your money game tight. And you know what I'd like to say, man? My number one rule of money is that your health is your wealth, and you can't be really wealthy if you're not healthy. And that's why I send all my friends to my concierge doctor, my man, Dr. Chalmers, you know who that is, Blue. I'll tell you what, before, let me loosen you up a little go bit. Ahead, you should have ahead. took a shot before we started, man. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you, you know, sincerely, uh, when I help, it might have helped you a little bit. Um, but Dr. Chalmers is cool as shit because that man, um, you know, first of all, he offered to, to, to give me some medical advice, which I, I deeply appreciate, obviously, you know. Uh, but he also took the time to reach out to my stepfather and and uh my mom and then and then after that he reached out to a few other people that i know and i'll be i i, I mean he didn't ask him for a dime he just did it because he loves to help people that's what he does and i do appreciate people like that you know you know the irony of that is i actually met chalmers because of the guest we have today i would not have met chalmers oh, if it wasn't for him absolutely our, our kids are in the same class in school together oh he did say that that's yeah. right that yeah. i like that dude a lot man that, that, that dude is, is, is A1, you know. Um, Me too. Yeah, he really is. He's just a good person. Man. You know, outside of what he does for us guys, and, and please don't sleep on Chalmers because he just dropped a TED Talk, and he, the context of that is something that's dear to our hearts, right? It's about addiction, and he's coming out. He's pioneering shit about how he's using cannabis, uh, medical-grade cannabis, to cure addiction, to combat the opioid epidemic. It's something that he's very passionate about. And what's really effed up about it is he's being censored. He's being uh, canceled. Uh, I think we were talking about it at dinner or lunch. He had over 6,000 followers and comments. The moment he dropped that talk, he had less than zero comments on it because he's <laughs> going against the pharma industry. So it's something, don't sleep on that, guys. If you want to reach out to him, he's charmerswellness.com. Better yet, reach him out direct, 214-446-5300. Not today, Blue. The other thing I don't think you and Joe knew about, bro, is that yesterday was the two-year anniversary of the very first podcast episode I did of The Insider Investor. No way. Yeah, yeah. I can't make this shit up, man. Dude. It, it actually gives me kind of goosebumps, man, because the way the shit is coming full circle, the man sitting next to you is the only reason I got on the game. He's one of the main reasons I met you. He's one of the reasons I'm out on the show. He didn't just change. He has not just changed my life, guys, but he's done this for thousands of others in the past 15 years he's been in this game. If you heard my first Financial Friday episode, you heard me talk about an organization called Apex which definitely changed my life. The founder of Apex is a multiple best-selling author. He's a family man, he's an investor, he's an entrepreneur, he's a sought-after speaker. He's even a fucking rancher now. He's the only farmer I know that has a Lambo. For more information on his program, check out his, uh, his website, apexentourage.com. Again, apexentourage.com. Follow his Instagram at Hardcore Closer. No, now, hardcore listen closer. up, listen up. I hope I do as hype man proud. You guys, without further ado, please put your hands together. My man, Ryan motherfucking Stewart! Let's go! Woo! <laughs> 
that, that's the best podcast intro ever. <laughs> I've been <laughs> wanting to do that since I heard Danny do it the first time. Wow. Welcome, my man. Welcome. It's an wow. honor to have you here, bro. I'm excited to be here. Y'all got a cool place. Oh, man. Thank you, bro. Yeah. You're a cool dude, though. Yeah, I, I hear a lot of things here. about you, my I man. I belong here. Listen, yeah. I, I like to get everybody that's out here. I mean, we got a couple people here. You guys listen up for one second, man. This guy's a, a very powerful person. I know you all know that. But if I get you guys to do one thing for me real quick for this man, we call it a two clap. So we're going to put our hands together. When I'm going to say, give me a two clap. We're going to give him two claps. Let me get a two clap. Let me get a two clap. Two clap. There he is, man. Ryan's too. Right, Make some noise, y'all. Yeah, yeah, man. That dude's amazing right there. Yep, yep. So what's up, man? How's your journey going? Well, you know, I have been all over the place today so far. And I've done two previous podcasts. So I'm on a little podcast tour right now. I did two yeah. previous podcasts this morning and got plans this evening. So just hammer down out yeah. there. And then... I'm off to Vegas next, and I've got two podcasts to do out there as well. So just nonstop. It's a, it's an actual thing, you yeah. know, the podcast tour. You really, you, <laughs> yeah. It's a real thing. I'm like, making it real. Six yeah. and two days. It's real right? now. Yeah. yeah. So where, where's home for you? Seven and in, in seven and three days. Yeah, yeah, that's the plan. Where do you come from? Where's home? Where's I'm home? from Dallas, Texas. Nice. Do you born so, and raised? Yes, actually, nice, dude. He's Played the up. proudest motherfucking Texan you ever met, too. I, I'm fourth generation, <laughs> you know. So yeah, yeah. As you should. You know, I, I, my whole family's always been there, and. I, I like going to play. I love it here. I just never found a reason to leave where I'm at. Hey, know? until now. I'll t- <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's a nice place. Texas is great. I, everything's big in Texas. That's right. That's what they say. So tell, do you play sports growing up? No, not really. No. Not a really athletic person. No, you, know, you look pretty fucking really... athletic to me, dog. I, well, I'm healthy. <laughs> I'm, I'm healthy. I go to the gym and yeah. stuff like that. Uh, but no, I never really was into to sports. I was never really that good at them. And so I was always selling the sports kids drugs. You know, that I like that part. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's like anybody heart, wants huh? them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, the thing about Ryan, man, is, and, uh, you know, give you guys a little backstory. You guys can look up who he is. There's a lot of people here in the audience who heard he was going to be here today who wanted to show up and say hi to him. But, you know, when I first met Ryan, and I haven't even told him this story, but if you guys heard that first episode, you know, I was at a really, really dark place in my life. I see this post, I end up in Cabo. I had no idea who the hell he was. I didn't know what a mastermind was. I, you know, I knew who Tony Robbins was, but that's, that's about it. But no, man. So Ryan, I I meet him in Cabo and we're, we're just more of like a, uh, it was a trip. There was a private jets involved. That's where I actually met Chalmers for the first time. I forgot about that. Where I met Kuklo, uh, I think Steve Weatherford, the Super Bowl winner. I have a lot of really cool friends. Right? That's what I'm saying. I got a lot of really cool friends. And I remember it being there. And, you know, I'd just gone through this shit. I'd just resigned my licenses. I went from making all this money to nothing. And meanwhile, I'm, I'm around all these ballers. And I'm kind of trying to fake it till I'm going to make it, to be honest with you, because I didn't even know what my identity was. And I get him into the corner, and he's kind of talking to me. He's like, what's your story? I tell him. So he kind of looks at me, and he's like, you ever been in jail? I said, nope. You ever been in prison? Nope. He goes, dude, I'm a double felon, working on my third, was facing 20-year life, you know, divorced a couple of times. I can't get a job at McDonald's. What's your fucking excuse? <laughs> Hey, I love that. And man, I've, fucking, I've said that story in a couple of that's podcasts, the real and that shit. shit resonated with me. And from that point on, I was like, I don't have an excuse. You uh, know, if he can do it, and if he's got this life now, beautiful family, beautiful kids, amazing business where you're giving back to people. Ryan, in your own words, tell the audience who doesn't know who you are, what, what the organization is, how you got into the game, and how'd you go from prison to what you're doing now, brother? Well, I didn't really have a choice. So uh, when I was my first went to prison when I was 20 years old for less than $200 worth of cocaine. So and I was with the hooker. So literally hookers and cocaine, like cliche reason to go to prison. Yeah. And especially in the 90s. This was 1999. Right? Probably a good time. And uh, <laughs> well, I didn't get to I didn't get to enjoy the hooker because I got in trouble with the drugs. You know, so it's a whole situation. And uh, so I go to prison at a young age. I get out when I'm 21 or 22. And I went in and served two years for less than $200 worth of cocaine. I ended in, up this, in Texas. In Texas. Yep. It's I a went, big deal. I went to, in, in Texas, eight different maximum and medium security and transfer facility prisons in a 19-month period. Wow. And just for some fucking bullshit drugs. For an ounce. Yeah, not even an ounce. Not bro. We're talking about like less, yeah. Than a quarter, yeah, yeah. less than a quarter ounce of coke. Wow. So uh, in Texas, it's less than 200 grams. So Shit. that's like the, the thing. So it doesn't matter if you have a quarter key or a, a, a couple of bumps. That's how yeah. they get you. So anyway, I went dim my time. I got out. All I knew is I didn't want to go back in there. For sure. Got out. 
tried to keep my act together and I got a job at a car wash because that's usually where people that get out of prison work, right? <laughs> I, but, but at least I was free. At least I wasn't in prison. And I got really good at washing cars. And one day a lady that came in the car wash, she said, I've been watching you work for a while and you're a hard worker. I want to give you a job. She was recruiting me and I didn't understand any of this at the time. And I asked her what she did. She said she was, she did mortgages. And I didn't know what a mortgage was. Like, what's a mortgage? She's like, <laughs> like a home loan. And, and so she's telling me to come work for her and I'm giving her every excuse and she's overcoming my objections. And finally I went, but I'm a felon. And she goes, well, what did you do? And I was like, I got caught with drugs. She goes, oh, you'll be fine. You'll fit right in, right? <laughs> it's the banking industry. <laughs> and, and so I went into the, I quit my job at the car wash. I went in as a mortgage person. And within two years, I had made a million bucks. Yeah. And, and so then I thought, wow, you know, no matter what my past is, I didn't, because I grew up, I was adopted and a bunch of other stuff that leads to, you know, going to prison. That It's not usually a first time offense and you had this great life and you wind up in prison. It's usually a series of traumatic events yeah. that, yeah. that yeah. land people there. But, but that gave me hope. Like, hey, I, I made, you know, a million dollars. I'm a felon and I'm not selling drugs. I'm not doing anything illegal. And you know what happened? The fucking police kicked in my door again. Nice. Nice. The first time they showed and you're up. doing it right this time? And I'm doing it right this time. Yeah. And it had been four or five years since I, I since the previous incident. I'd already done my time, got out, and it had been, you know, four or five years since all this. They kick in my door. I don't have any drugs, but there was a gun in the house. So then now they're frying me for felon in possession of a firearm. I got to go to federal prison this time because in the state of Texas, it's not a crime. So they kick in my door. It's not a crime to, for a felon to own a gun in their primary residence in Texas. They kick in my door, don't find drugs, charge me with some bullshit. I get the charge dropped. Then they turn me over to the ATF. The ATF doesn't recognize the state's law to do that. It's not go to federal prison. Is that your last day of probation? Uh, what's what, that? Were you on probation? Still? No, I was off parole oh, or everything. Oh, I was really? completely free. Just state. because he was a felon, he couldn't have yep. a gun in the house. Texas was cool with that, but ATF. I but the ATF well, is different. Well, yep. I, I say that because I have a very similar story. Yep. My, my last day of, um, uh, you know, probation for conspiracy to commit a crime when I was, I don't remember how you, which uh, is a bullshit well, charge which, which in the first is, place. It's a wobbler. Yeah. Ghost dope. Yeah. It's, a, it's, it's exactly, there's nothing, they had yeah. nothing on me, <laughs> Right. Yeah. Exactly. but they're going to sign this deal. You're like, okay, conspiracy. What's that mean? Yeah, you know, sign this deal or life sentence, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They do some bullshit like that. <laughs> but, but on my last day I had, you know, um, on my last day of probation, my house gets raided by the, uh, the, uh, uh, who'd you say? A ATF? ATF. And I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like, what, my, and I'm, I wasn't even home, you know, thank God. <laughs> and they're calling me Mr. Wright. I wasn't need, home either. Yeah, yeah, they're like, you need to get home. And oh, I'm you like, weren't home when they no, did that no, the second time. No, I wasn't home either. Yeah. Great they, detective work, gentlemen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but so anyways, they, so they I kick I, it in. So they, uh, they, they, they ended up uh, having my gun, which is in my name, but I never, so, you know, uh, registered. Regist surrendered it. I never surrendered it. So that's why they came. Uh, they told me, you know, show up to the station. I never went back. I was just like, oh, no, I'm not even, you know, they're going to have to come get me, you know, but it's been 10 years. I had an attorney ask them about it. They're like, oh, if they don't contact you, don't worry about it. So Make sure we lock the doors right now. Those fuckers. Are probably <laughs> <listening>. <laughs> I've got it wiped off my record. Keith Yaki was, <laughs> whose show you were on? He also was arrested me for that same deal and caught the same case with me. No shit. Right? I didn't know no that. No shit? Yeah, me and Yaki went what to jail. We went world. to jail. with that guy <laughs> last night. Yeah, you brought his show last night. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And him and I coincidentally went to high school together as well. Mm -hmm. And and we spoke in, in you know for many years together with at different places. And, and you end up getting a federal thing wiped clean or getting Oh yeah, we're both of? we're both completely Oh off, yeah, well, I need paper. to introduce that me I need to meet that person. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got you. I need a wiper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we got you. Awesome. Perfect. All right, so go ahead. But I'm sorry. But I just so, thought it was so, so they kick similar. I'm like, holy time. shit. You know? Yeah. So they now kick in my door. Charge. Now I'm hit the ATF. I gotta go do another fifteen months in prison. And uh I spent that time while I was in prison studying, trying to be better because I had a little taste of success. And now I had like a 15 month break to go figure out a game plan to get back in the game and be more successful when I came out. So I walked in a millionaire and I owned a bunch of homes and everything else. And I walked out with $25, maybe $50 to my name in a halfway house as a residence. Mm. This was 2008. So now it's 2023. So it's been a long time, but I knew two things. I was at all time low right then in that moment, walking out of prison, I could get no lower. And so I could only go up and B, I was willing to work for whatever I had to. So I went, got a job back in the mortgage industry, start making money again, doing good, make about $300,000 in 2009, which was a horrible year for the mortgage business, right? Mm -hmm. 
and I'm doing this W-2 job. I'm done. I'm on parole with the, the Fed. So I'm doing the call in the drug test number every day bullshit and all the stuff that you got to do. And Dodd-Frank gets passed. And Dodd-Frank says, if you're a convicted felon, you can't have a financial license. And like, and, and what happened was the states issued financial licenses at the time. And Dodd-Frank made the mortgage license become a federal issue deal. And the Fed said, if you were a felon, you couldn't have a license. So I had to surrender my state. I couldn't get a federal license, which meant I was out of a job. So think about this. If I was a normal felon, right, that, that just wasn't lucky. I was just a lucky bastard because I was poor white trash. There was nothing fancy. I don't have a good upbringing. Those kind of people don't go to jail, right? <laughs> right? They don't do two years on their first offense. That's not how that happens. That is, two years on your first offense is a sign that you're a poor, right? Yeah. So, so <laughs> just, it's true. Because it here's what happens. If you have an attorney and you fight it for two years, then they're like, oh, I'll give him probation. He's out. Or, or just drop so the you, charges you, or whatever. Yeah, you yeah. Either, either go fight it for two years or you go do some time. And, yeah, and that's right. just the game, you know? And, and so for, for me, here I am, this poor person has got to do this time. The second time I go in there, I got some experience behind me. Then Dodd-Frank gets passed, and, and now I, don't have a, a, I can't get a job. You know, It's like if I was a normal person that was going through the recidivism of the penitentiary system, think about that. It's like every time that I got ahead, they, the government has shut me down. I, it's yeah. never been yeah. a banker or a thief or an economy. Oh. I got ahead legally, made millions, gover the, the government come in, kicks in my door, sends me to jail, costs the government. I was out there paying hundreds of thousands of dollars a year in taxes. Now they're paying hundreds of thousands of dollars a year of tax money to house me, a nonviolent, non-repeat, got a license, got a bank account, filing tax return, citizen in prison. Then I get out, get my shit together again. What are the chances somebody gets their shit together after the second time? What are the chances? It's got to be like landing like black one on the, on the roulette wheel three times in a row. What, a hundred right? thousand on yes, the line? Yes, three like, times in a row times, or something. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, God. So, so I get my shit together again, and then here's the government in again with wow. Dodd-Frank, and I'm like, well, fuck. Yeah. What, what, what am I to do? And, and so I didn't know anything, but a real estate friend of mine, he – he gave me some DVDs and he said, I paid $8,000 for these DVDs. You should watch them. And I'm like, dude, this guy's really cheap with money. So I'm like, somebody got this dude paid eight grand for DVDs. I'm going to watch this, right? <laughs> yeah. Just to figure out what the hell they sold them. Yeah. And it taught me this internet marketing. It was a, a, a Ryan Dice's continuity blueprint. Wow. And it taught me this, this internet marketing world. And I thought, wow, I can teach these loan officers since I can't compete against them. Yeah. I can coach them. You know, they say those who can't coach. Teach. I was like, oh, that's that's me. That's perfect. I, I can't. I can't do mortgages anymore. I can teach these guys how I was making money. I can teach these guys social media and a lot of other things like that. And, and from there, you know, we started doing events. And then I started coaching people. And then as the business grew, it wasn't just loan officers. Turns out it worked for realtors and then it worked for roofers. And we started producing results, much like your story yeah. with the, in the cannabis industry. And mine's just for for business, but now I feel like I run like a for-profit church. Yeah. For for entrepreneurs that want to come in and get education and network with the right people and be. I mean, Tony's talking about one of our events that we did. He just named a, uh, a you know, Mr. Olympia. Uh, I think uh, Super Bowl winner. Super Bowl winner. Like a doctor you know, that's a, a doctor genius. that's a genius. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That are all you. Yeah, your I have wife, a great I mean, network. Your wife was there too, and I yep. mean, Amy is another you know testament to what can happen when you come out and get your shit together because yep. people look at your life now it's oh it's so perfect you got these beautiful kids but they don't know the shit that you went through to get that life now you know what i mean well, well ryan you know i, I want to ask you a question you know why do you think tony's in tears right now it's cannabis talk 101 on financial fridays we'll be right back after this break <laughs> This is Joe Grande, Cannabis Talk 101, live right here at Planet 13. Make sure you check out Cannabis Talk magazine. It's going down real big. Bang.
Man, if you haven't seen the newest edition of Cannabis Talk Magazine, make sure you DM us, come by the studio, or go to your favorite smoke shop or dispensary. This is an awesome magazine, awesome content. You're going to see some cool pictures of us and the lowriders and the new cars. Check it out, CannabisTalkMagazine.com. We're now back here with my man, the hardcore closer, Ryan Steumann himself. You asked me a question. What was that question, Blue? I was asking Ryan why he thought you were in tears because I, I find it so you know amazing that... I, and, and Ryan, you know, Tony and I have became really good friends and... And I've been, you know, working with him and, and, and watching him. And, and he always brings you up, you know, and always tells about how much it meant to him to have that, those, those words in, in, in Mexico, right, Cabo or mm -hmm. whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's just, and like, he, he is just, it changed his life, you know, it, it really did. And, and, and it didn't cost him anything to do that. Well, <laughs> no, well, I mean... <laughs> I, I, I'm telling you that not in, not in Mexico to hear him say that word. I, what I will you know, say and those words are is not is not the the, the, the it's it's you know. I, thank you for that, Tony. By yeah, the way. Man. yeah. No, I mean it's. it's I was asking him though. Let me ask yeah. him. Why do you think he was, you know, so touched by what you've told him? I, I think he had a moment of, of, of gratitude and realization that wow, this guy has really helped me out more than, and and that's my thing. One day when when I get to heaven. I'd like to look down and see all the connections that I really made. I didn't know y'all were had Chalmers up here. He's just yeah. my doctor friend that goes to school with my kids yeah. and hangs. I mean, he's my doctor friend from like my hometown. So I didn't even realize he was plugged in with you guys on that level. And, and, you know, I have forgot that Kuklo and Weatherford went with us to <laughs> Cabo. Too, Cause right. it's just, it's not to sound crazy, but this is like my real life that I've gotten yeah. used to at this point in time. But then somebody like Tony come in, I forgot what you used to look like too. You didn't used to look like this. I, I just, you know, time goes on and I didn't really think about it. And I, I think he had that same realization. It's like, man, that trip, those people became my friends. I, I lost weight. I did 75 hard. I got my shit together. I started. And, and that's what I'm here. That's what I really believe I'm put here on this planet for. Cause every time yeah. that, that I went to jail or that, that these other things have happened to me, it's because I wasn't doing what I'm doing right now. Yeah. Just being the, an example of what's possible. And the more people that I can reach with that are in a dark time or a light time, it doesn't matter. And show them, hey, here's how everything gets good. Listen, I've been to these dark times. I've been adopted, incarcerated, homeless, addicted to drugs, yeah. in prison multiple times. And now I've got a, a, a wife I've been with for nine years. I've got four kids. I was able to adopt a child, yeah. right? Like, like I have two that are from my wife and I. She had a child from a previous marriage. A judge signed papers saying that I, a two-time felon, have, despite my past, have, have shown enough to be able to get uh, yeah. adoption of this kid. I got pulled over by the police doing 107 miles an hour in my McLaren with, with one of my children in them recently. And police pulls up, obviously... I wasn't just hauling ass down the freeway. I was going around somebody and it speeds up quick if you have a fast car. And the police pulls me over and he's like, man, I've never let anybody go for driving over 100 miles an hour before. But he goes, I looked up your criminal record and you haven't even so much as have a speeding tickets since 2008. I'm not going to ruin that for you. Slow the fuck down. It's, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. But but Amen. I, I've changed my life so much that even when I did get in trouble, the police officer who in the past have been clearly <laughs> not good to me was like, yeah. hey, yeah. I see what you're trying to do. And I see w w that you're doing things correct, man. And I'm going to let you ride for that. So so but all these things have happened to me so that I could I could help somebody like Tony's. And the good news for me is there's thousands of people like Tony that I've been yeah. able to make a a small or significant impact that sometimes we go our whole lives and we hear the same shit over and over, but somebody comes along and they say the right combination of words that unlocks that closed mind and takes you to the next level. I just want to maybe get a chance to be that for as many people as I can. And, and, and thank you for that. Right. And the reason that Tony, I really wanted him to say it is because I wanted you to hear it before, you know, your message it, to me all the time. It, it, it's, you know, you, you always give this man, you know, praise you're just you know because of how, what he's done for you um and, and so can you explain that what you feel he's done for you no you know i i think the thing with ryan for me was just you know he's not a perfect man he doesn't come out there like tony robbins is fucking seven you mean he's tall. fucking real yeah. the guy's real as shit yeah, he just tells real. you hey, he's, I, I fucked up, you know yeah. he's, he's cursing and he, like when he has a downtime he tells you uh his vulnerability online more than anything you know he doesn't show this perfection life I put this guy that we all know out here on blast a little bit a uh, while ago and it was because this dude's always got this perfect life you know this perfect trophy wife perfect cars perfect house 
And it's like, dude, I know you got bad days. And it's not just because you dinged your $50,000 rent. You know what I mean? But when you look at his life, it was like, dude, he talks about his past. He's not trying to bury it. More importantly, I think when you mentioned the tears is I started realizing how much this shit has come full circle, you know, and that there is a higher power that's constantly looking out for me. And I always tell people, man, I have an army of guardian angels that I owe it to. Uh, he always told me, he's like, dude, you owe it to us now because we believed in you. Don't fuck this up. And that's the shit that stays with yeah. me. And then I start thinking about the paying it forward. There's somebody listening right now that's like, damn, I resonate with that. You know of course. what I mean? And it's those little things. It's that one tiny decision that I made. I mean, I was just scrolling around on the internet. I was probably jerking off to porn or something when I stumbled upon his post. You Hardcore. I mean? like, he every time. <laughs> hey, he's keeping it real. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm serious. It wasn't like I searched it out. I wasn't looking for self-help. Sure. It's just the right place at the right time. I surrounded myself with the right people. And he always says, man, his mission is just to make you the best version of yourself that you could be. And, I, and I'm truly grateful for it. And, and I started thinking about all the people that I've now been surrounding myself with. And I would say at least 80, 78% of them, the Insider Investor Club, you know, the two founders of that, my partners, Jeff and Arnie, I met at his executive yep, program. Eight, and I keep yep. forgetting how many people through that. I mean, I have a shit ton of friends that you've met, but a lot of that crew has come from that, that ecosystem, man. So I, I, I greatly appreciate that. I appreciate that too, because one of the things that hurts me in this business is I do that. I give somebody the connections like I've done for you, and then then they forget where it comes from and they leave, or some of them even go on to get mad at me because I had to be honest with them and maybe say something. And it's it's like, man, I've done so much for I try to do so much for everybody, yeah. you know. So it really, really I appreciate hearing that because it's just like reinforced when I'm doing the right thing. It's, you, you, you know, know. you know, it's funny is is we we have a saying for that. It's called "Don't forget who brought you to the dance." Right. You know, yeah. and, yep. and, and, and it's, it's true. I mean, we, we have, um, you know, I, I, we were working a very, uh, parallel paths to just, you know, we we're just next to each other. We haven't seen each other, but like different you, industries, but totally very different, similar. But, but they're yeah. so, they're so the same, Yeah, you know, and Absolutely. you know, there's so much the same. I mean, you know, but, but like, I mean, like, you know, a lot of the, the training that I, I work with, with people is, you know, the bear of life, believe energy, action results. When you believe in something, there's energy with energy, there's action, action, there's results care and communication. You know, if you don't care, you don't communicate. We want nothing to do with you. Right. And it's just like the, the you know, the fortunes in the follow up, you know, there, there's all those little things, but there, th when you actually live them and you're actually, you know, yeah. delivering them and you, Hey, don't forget who brought you to the dance. And then don't forget to wait for the magic to happen. Right. Because a lot of people, they want the magic to happen in, too fast. And, the, and, and it's unrealistic when we're teaching them to be unrealistic as well, though. It's like I'm, I'm teaching you to be unrealistic because wealthy people were unrealistic people. We have unrealistic cars. We do unrealistic things. But you have to wait for the magic to happen, though. You know, and it doesn't come, you know, often, you know, as fast as you want it to. And sometimes you lose it because I've done the same thing. I built it up and lost all my ass. You know, I watched it all just wipe out the door really quick. And it was amazing well, how fast I'm able to rebuild it, though. You know, and there's a difference between us. And someone that's never lost it, that's scared to lose it, and us that yeah. lost it, that don't know what yeah, yeah, yeah. we can get yeah. it all fucking back at any moment, baby. Oh, that's, that's a magic power yeah, that God bro. gave us that only a few oh, got, man. man. And when you know, you know. Oh, you, man. You go all in on yourself, dude. Yeah. That's the other thing we were talking about. Like, there's two types of people, right? Like, when I got on that jet, I was literally down to my last few bucks, dude. My house was in foreclosure. I was down to the last Big fucking time. dollar. And I'll never forget it, dude. Now, there's another story I'll tell Damn, you. Damn, I didn't even know all that. On. You didn't. Yeah. You didn't. And there's there's a backstory to that that next time I'll tell you that will blow your mind, man, of, of the chain of events that happened for me to end up on that airplane when I met him. And when I met him, I ended up having some cash in my suitcase. I'm paying money for everybody. It was on my birthday, too. Yep. So I'm buying shots of 42 for everybody, <laughs> this and that. And we're on the plane ride back and every, you know, I tend to kind of make friends wherever I go and we're driving back and he goes, low key, I think Tony's going to be the, like the biggest uh, baller on this plane. Like he's, he's going to be a low key billionaire. And I'm thinking you poor bastard, <laughs> I don't, I'm going home. I can't even make rent. Right. Yeah. Like, but I was all in because I was like, I, I'm not going to go back to a nine to five. I'm not going to go back to a $40,000 year job. What am I going to do? Go flip pizzas. I got to put myself in the right rooms, surround myself with the right people and I'll figure it out. And literally, that's what happened, brother. Yeah, it's called. How about that? It's called dancing underwater and not getting wet. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think there's a big difference between that and faking it till you make it, right? Yeah. There's so many people that yeah. are flossing, they're pretending. That wasn't it. Yeah. This was no. I believe in myself enough. I believe in the right no, circles no. enough. You know? No, no, no. Listen, I, I, I think you know. For for me, I think it's it's so important to to 
to to be humble and honest with yourself when you're in bad positions, right? For you to be vulnerable right now and share that with all the listeners out there about you, for you to be vulnerable to come up and tell us, you know, if you listen to the first podcast he ever comes out, he says, listen, you know, I went to, you know, uh, what is it, uh, Wall Street and, you know, damn near got kicked out of Wall Street and this and that. I mean, you put yourself on blast first, you know. There's a lot to that. A lot of people don't want to do that. They don't want to sit there and say, hey, look, I fucked up. And I think the more, although we all do, everybody, everybody, fucks everybody up. Yeah. yeah, everybody. And, and, and I get it, you know, and, and, I, and sometimes it's, it's the most humblest thing to do. Like if my team's not doing well, I come in there and tell them the first thing I apologize, guys. And they're like, what? Because you know I mean? they think I'm going to go in there and get upset or something else. And I'm like, I apologize because I've let you down. Right. Because if our numbers are down, it's my fault. And whatever, whatever it is, and if, if our, you know, our level of education is down, if we have complaints, if we have this, it's because it's, I'm fucking up, you know, and I know that. And, and, and so when I'm not fucking up and I'm present with my team, it's amazing. The and, vulnerability and, 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 was something and, you told me, sorry to cut you off, but you actually told me that too, because I was so afraid, Blue, of somebody Googling my, oh, you, you took a lifetime ban from Wall Street. And I'm like, no, fuckers, I walked away. But then the more I was t- sharing my story with Ryan, he's like, dude, you embraced it, it. He said, put it that's out what there. He, that's what you he taught said, It's your what story. He, he said, but start a podcast, that's start what a power him. move, write a book. And I was like, well, nobody wants to listen to me. He goes, you think anybody wanted to listen to me? He goes, yeah, I got 5 million downloads right now, 100,000 a week. He goes, but four people listened to my first podcast. I was sitting in my fucking car. And I went and looked up his first podcast. There was 12 now. There's like 12 people that listened to that first one. And, and so here's, here's the way to think about that, though. If... Let's say that you went to Wall Street and you made five million dollars in your history in Wall Street. Just hear me out here. Yeah. And you wrote a book about that. Everybody on Wall Street, everybody in the mainstream media, everybody on social media, nobody gives a shit. That's like a day's pay for some of those guys up there. Right. And and so and it's not an interesting story. Good. Good for you. You made it through mid-level management in Wall Street. Congratulations. So now you've got a real story like I went there made some money, got kicked the fuck out of there, learned some lessons, got some, got some stripes on my back. I've got some wisdom under my belt. Like yeah. that's an exciting story, yeah. right? If, if like we all have seen the Wolf of Wall Street, right? If there wasn't some kind of craziness going on with that part of the story, it wouldn't have been, nobody's watching the Vanguard story where they're just like coming up <laughs> doing well, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like, yeah. like people like those stories because people resonate with low points. People don't see themselves as the millionaire. A lot of folks, People don't see themselves as the millionaire or the super successful. They think it's highly unlikely it's going to happen to them because that's what's been programmed yep. in through them through Correct. school and everything else. And so, they, but they do see the people that have, that, like me, that have gone to prison. Oh, I've been to prison, right? Gone through divorce. Oh, I've been divorced. You know, lost their job. Oh, I lost my job. They resonate with that. Yeah. And they're like, Absolutely. okay, so this person's like me. What's their story of how they got somewhere? Because they understand. The guy that's the mid-level management and worked halfway up the corporate ladder and just, and retired the Dave Ramsey way. That guy's fucking boring. <laughs> exactly, you know? man. Yeah, we no offense that to him. That's great for him, but nobody wants to read that story. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, speaking of money right now, this is obviously Financial Fridays. I knew having you on, this could turn into another two-hour episode. I know you're <laughs> going to be a friend of the show and you're going to come back, but we're going to take a break right now. When we come back, we're going to do the Financial Friday Five. We'll see you right back. Cannabis Talk 101. Let's go. We want to work with people that are going to be here for a long time, making pre-rolls, making cartridges, making tinctures, and we want to help them expand and do a great job in the state and be able to deliver on time. So we don't have a minimum. We help everybody. I don't know what you're going to do in the future. So there's no small order or small client because tomorrow you might not be a small farmer. You might be a large farmer. Our biggest thing is we're going to give you red carpet, white glove service. People can get in contact with us at info at bearflagcali.com. You guys, one of my favorites, the Bear Flag Group, they are your white label partners. In fact, my man Greg State, extra just to see Ryan here in the studio. They are yeah. known to be on time, accurate. They also do quality co-packing glue. One of my favorites, they're local here in California since 2015. Don't sleep on the Bear Flag Group. Check them out at bearflaggroup.com. We're back here with the hardcore closer himself, Ryan Stuman, founder and CEO of Apex Entourage. Now, we promised you the Financial Friday Five. These are five financial questions. I'm gonna start with the first one, and it's something that I know you and I have resonated on. What's the most amount of money you've lost to an investment, or what was it? It was seven hundred thousand dollars, and uh, I had a, a sure thing from a really close friend of mine, 
And <laughs> and here here's the mistake I made. How much was it? It was seven hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Most money because most investments don't go to zero. You usually get something back from right. This went to zero. These guys and, and we wired the money to an attorney. Everything was done. And I'm still in a, a lawsuit. I had to sue these guys over this. But we wired the money to an, an attorney's IOLTA account. So it was supposed to be completely secured and all this other stuff. And they just misappropriated a lot of the funds and, and COVID happened. Mm. And so the, the thing that we they were going to sell got shut down and couldn't get access to it for months. And then the, just things started to fall apart and crumble. And it was very difficult for me because I put only $100,000 into this investment of my own cash, but I promised my buddies that it was a safe investment that were in with me and I covered their their oh wow their yeah. losses as well, which was another $600,000. Wow. And uh, it wasn't easy, but I'm a man of my word and I gave him my word. So, and, and it's not like I'm rich enough to just be writing checks like that. I didn't have it. I didn't get it from the other thing. But I had given these guys my word that this was good and, and I couldn't predict COVID and neither could they. But yeah. but since then, I've gone on to do business with them a few times. I don't think I've made the seven hundred thousand dollars back yet. But <laughs> but since then, I've gone on to, to do business and build a relationship. And I could call either one of those guys right now and ask for a million bucks and they'd wire it without paperwork. Yeah, I, I learned right. from you on that one, too, because, Respect. you know, recently you and I have lost a lot of money on another venture. And one of the things that I kind of would hit Shit you up happens. on, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. it was that is I'm like, hey, man, what are you going to do this and that? You're like, you know what? The energy I'm going to put into that, I'm just going to make more money. You know, I'll let my attorneys handle it. It was just, you know, no sweat off your balls. I mean, it was a lot of money. And I don't think anybody can ever afford or wants to lose six, seven, eight hundred thousand, five hundred thousand. I think anything six figures and above is painful. But that outlook was kind of new to me because I was so traumatized by losing money, having people steal from me that I get triggered easily. But that, that's another lesson that I've learned from that. What's question number two, Blue? Question number two of Financial Fridays with Ryan Stuman, the motherfucking Ryan Stuman. <laughs> Ryan motherfucking, motherfucking Stuman. Stuman. Oh, is it yeah, Ryan yeah, motherfucking Don't, twisted, Stuman. don't fuck that up. <laughs> <laughs> what, is your, what is the best investment you ever made? Myself? Yes. <laughs> yes. Can't tax it, can't take it away from you. And uh, I saw a, po a post on Facebook this morning from Tanner Chidester. And he said, I just did the math. I've invested $3 million into my personal development. And I thought, man, I'm probably pretty close to that range to seminars, mentors. Yeah. Right now I have Patrick Bet David as a mentor. I have Pastor Keith Kraft out of Elevate Life Church as a mentor. I have Bobby Castro, who is a, a billionaire exit, you know, private equity guy. Uh, just huge, amazing guy as a mentor. I have Dan Martell, who's SAS Academy. He's helped a bunch of companies like ClickFunnels and everything else make huge, huge amounts of money and exits in the software industry. So I'm constantly investing money in myself because here's what I was just going to say. If I'd have taken that same $100,000 or $700,000 and invested it into my own thing, it'd be $7 million by now. Yeah. Because I know, I, like, when people that, here's the funny thing about money that I've noticed, not everybody, so I'm not trying to lump them in the same category, but a large majority of the people that raise money or the people that take investors, they don't treat that money as if they work for it. See, I built my yeah. eight figure empire with a credit card, Yeah. right? Like, I, you know, in, 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 and I'm talking about monthly Amex credit card. So I never took investors. I never took bank loans. I only dealt with what I could deal with. And in the beginning, Amex don't give you a half a million dollar nope. line of credit. They give you $5,000. And man, I just built, paid, built and paid yeah. and built and paid over the years. From five, then 20, then 30, then it's like 50. And I'm like, oh, yeah, and then it's out. unlimited, right? Yeah. And, and is where I'm at today. And, and that took time. And so the best investment's been in myself because every time I've, I'm the guy that goes to a seminar watches somebody learn something go shit i don't want to stay any longer i need to get out of here and put that into action right i just want to go and, go and make work. things happen and same thing if i had put that 100 grand or that 700 grand in mine it'd be so much more so I, I stopped doing that because people don't when you don't work for it you don't treat it the same if you had to work 40 hours for that investment digging a hole and that was the last money you're going to get you would treat my investment money a whole lot different than <laughs> yeah, if you could just go yeah. out and get more from tony or yeah. more from blue yeah, yeah. right yeah. yeah and and i i don't treat it that way clearly but i see that so it's always like and well that's cuz you're 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 more of a street guy though i think there's an infatuation i say this you know with ultra wealthy and and ultra poor and i was sharing this with with you know the team that you brought through some of your guests you know the very 
you know, poor people are looking at ultra wealthy people like they want to be like them. And then ultra wealthy people love hanging out with people that aren't as wealthy sometimes. And that's because they have an infatuation because they need each other. Yeah. They need each other, you know, and, and, and it's like they, you know, they don't even know why. But they, but you need each other because there's some people that just work fucking harder and, and they go to work and, and they become your number one salesperson, number your, one your number one sales guy, your, your number one man, your ace in the yeah. hole. The guy that works on Saturday and Sunday and, and then turns around and tells his family how great you are and then turns around and, and teaches his cousin how to do it and his friends and they start to become raving friends. Yep. And so, I, you know, I could appreciate exactly what you're saying. It's very true, man. You, you, you need the right people and to work your ass off. You know, what, what do you think, you know, for yourself, right, is, you know, what's the best feel-good story that you've actually had and watch somebody. Well, I guess we're still on number three. We're on yeah, number well, I mean, it goes goes along those lines. Well, I don't want to jump outside your box. That's fine. And to kind of piggyback off take, of that, I'll too, ask it I, afterwards. I think, uh, I think it's a good lesson, too, because you and I had a conversation recently, Ryan, about you know the money that we were both kind of tangled up in in this last fiasco. And you said, you know what, Tony? I'm done dealing with these little syndication bullshits and these small timers. I have now got a family office, right? You remember yep. what I told you? I said, man, that's just another level of hustle. You know, it's just the numbers are bigger, the titles are fancier, yeah. but they're still gonna fuck you. And what did I tell you? I said, dude, real estate and what you're already doing, is anything gonna make you more than 50, 60%? The game that you're already in? Fuck all these guys, you know, throw your play money in there, throw your stock market money in there, yeah. your gambling money, because you're not a big gambler. And I think when I said that to you, you're like, yeah, dude, you're right. Because I don't make more than that, you know, and any other investment have you made than yourself and in real estate, right? And, and just think about it. You know, I did a, a deal where I put up like 250 grand to make $20,000 a year later, 20 grand. That's not even a day's pay for, for what, like, and I risked, like, and I, I risked multiple hundreds of thousands of dollars and that just gets passive income. It's earning and blah, blah, blah. But, but I risked hundreds of thousands for a day's pay. And I'm like, man, fuck this. I'm not, I, I could take that 200 grand yeah. and invest it into myself. I could go get, for 200 grand, I could go get time with maybe even someone like Donald Trump or, yeah. or, or Obama. So I get an hour of their time for 200 grand or Jay-Z. I'm going to become a better person. Yep. Of, of of that interaction than you know a student then then just I 20 grand <laughs> along those lines question number three what's the best present you've ever bought yourself brother the best present i ever bought myself would be a car and uh probably the one i own now and i have i have a, a lot of cars i'm a car guy but the best present i've ever got myself would be my 2020 mclaren 720s i have that thing absolutely just decked out with all sorts of it, there's it's funny mclaren will spend hundreds of millions of dollars to put together the perfectly engineered car and then i'll go slap rims on that lower <laughs> tune it put exhaust put different freaking hood on it different wings on it everything nothing's the same i'm like now it's perfect so yeah i love it uh, what's uh, question number four? What is the best present you bought somebody else? I bought my wife last year a 12 carat diamond ring to replace the wedding ring that we had when we got married. Nice. So that was that was really nice, really cool man. Give it up for that, that man. Sense. That's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, give it back that, to that, that's a phenomenal present. Did she know it was coming or did you surprise her? How'd that work out? No, I had our guy, Nick from Apex, yeah. you know, just come in the office and ask her some questions. And of course she picked out the biggest one. Right? <laughs> and, 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 but it, but it was a cool feeling because first of all, I've, I've been through relationships that don't last very long before, including marriages. And so we've got all this time together and kids, I've adopted the kids and, and she puts up with me so much because yep. I, I have evolved. I'm a lot better human than just, I was nine years ago. We should be sure. getting better every day. And if I'm only getting, 1% better every single day, then I'm like 9,000 times better than I was the day she met me, right? Yeah. And she's pushing me to be that. So I just wanted to, to give that gift back to her. Is to Plus, I, my wife, I want when another man or another woman looks at her, I want her, to, I want them to go, somebody values her because there's, they, you don't just wear that ring around and be a nobody. That is a woman of value. That's somebody who values this person. And I just, that's like my way of showing that to the world too for, for yeah. her. No, shout out Amy. I mean, she's a phenomenal gal. I know, you know, she's a phenomenal cook. I mean, at the house of the dinner, more importantly, 
I think she makes you the man that you are. Absolutely. Because she's, uh, she does put, uh, put up with a lot of shit, but this gal got her shit going, too. You know? Yes, yeah, she she's does. She's a hedge fund manager. I mean, yeah. she, we speak the same language, money. Yeah. She yeah. Was, <laughs> he's, he's the same language, money. <laughs> yeah, she was Series 63 and yeah. 6 and 7 license. She nice. raised hundreds yeah. of millions of dollars for hedge funds. So she, I love it. she didn't need me to come into her life. And in the beginning, uh, I stayed home and watched the kid. Uh, while I was building my internet business, while she went off and raised money for the hedge fund, and, and oh, she, I never let a woman pay my bills or anything like that. I'm not that guy, but right. but she was, you she know, was carrying her. Yeah, she, she was carrying her own awesome. weight. I didn't have to carry both of us. So yeah, yeah, That's I'd love awesome. to have her on as a team next time because yeah, I, I she's think great. She, there's a lot she's of valuable nuggets that she got too. It's <laughs> funny as hell. <laughs> All right, man. Final question: If you could buy one thing, money is not an object. What's that going to be, man? That is a great question. That's One Joe's thing, question. Money's not an option. Uh, pr probably a, a Falcon 10X jet. And uh, the reason why is, A, I, I just, I love private jets. Like cars and jets are my thing. I wear cheap clothes. I don't care about being flashy fashion-wise. I always wear the same black company shirt. So, but I love aviation. I'm just intrigued by it. It's cool. It's fast. It's in, and those jets do amazing stuff. And that's probably a $70 million jet. And it allows me that I like those because a they're cool to hang out. Everybody has a good experience when you go places with people, but it allows me to get back and forth in the same day too. Yeah. So I get to maybe speak in California, but I still get to go home and be in bed next to my wife that night. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a beautiful purchase. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we we, we all reached out. We put a couple of our investors together. You don't know about this, but we bought it for you. <laughs> oh, <hey>. oh, that's <laughs> great. Hey. Oh, hey. <laughs> he was like, what? <laughs> you know, I, I love pointing this out to you from a money. I would love to one day. Hopefully I will <laughs> hey, buy yeah, I'll be yeah, right. I'll be go. right. Hey, you, I'll go, even I'll if you, you get one and you just let me fly <laughs> on it, we'll be we'll, good. We'll share gas on That's it. That's right. You know, yeah. But you know, from a money standpoint, some people look at, hey, I took a PJ because it's flossy and this and that. Ryan, yeah. tell them a little bit about what you do, these masterminds in there. Because I think that's something a lot of people are copying you on, emulating. But it's something that you've turned into kind of not even a side hustle, but a way that you do business that I think isn't just, I rented a hundred thousand dollar jet. All right, Blue, you ready for this? I'm ready. You ready for this? You're gonna lose your mind at this story, okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. So in 2020, I'm leaving an event and I get on American Airlines flight, okay? And if you work for American Airlines, just cover your ears. So I get on this American <laughs> Airlines flight. I hate American <clears throat> Airlines. And by the way. it's a long flight. I don't know where <laughs> I'm coming from, but I'm clearly going to Dallas, right? And I don't know, I don't remember because I fly a lot, I don't remember the trip, but it's 2020. They're being assholes. You know, you get on the jet and they're immediately like, put your mask on. It's like, hello, lady. Nice to meet you, too. You know, like, <laughs> pull your mask over your nose. You're going to kill everybody. Like, they were yeah, just, dude, it was unreal, yeah. right? Yeah. And so I sit in the, the the chair and they're just, this lady's just going after it. And usually I vape on, on the jets. Yeah. I know it's illegal. I yeah. don't give a shit. Yeah. I can just waft it out. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? I, I got good timing on how too. long they're going to be. <laughs> yeah, fuck many them, times, right? Many times. It's so stupid. I'm not killing anybody. Yeah, you know, yeah. there's we're no second day in smoke from that shit. So. <laughs> So I go off and, but this lady, boy, she's like, she's, she's like, she reminds me of this prison guard I know from Nigeria named Uday. He don't let shit go by. She was Uday in us, right? And, and so I go off into the bathroom and I got two vapes, like the tobacco jewel type yeah. of thing. And then I've got this weed vape. Yeah. So I hit the jewel first because, because I'm thinking if the alarm goes off, then I'll just be like, oh, I didn't know it was a vape, blah, blah, blah. Just play stupid. Maybe I'll make it by. So I hit this jewel. I blow it in the bathroom. Nothing happened, so I hit it a couple times. Then I grabbed the weed vape. I pulled the weed vape out, and I hit it, and as soon as I exhaled, arr, 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 the f we're 30,000 feet in the fucking air, and the fire alarm's going off. I, I had like a split second, y'all. You don't, you're like one second to make a decision. What the fuck am I gonna do? Clearly, I got this weed pan. I can't throw it in there. They're gonna find it if they go looking for it. What am I gonna do? Within a split second, I ran out the door. Holy shit, there's smoke in there. I think the jet's on fire. They, the fucking you staff. Said, yes. Yeah. And, and the staff runs over there, and they got like a fire extinguisher looking for what's going on. And everybody in the plane starts freaking out. They start screaming. Ah, ah. Everybody was worried the plane was going to crash. No. Except, except for me. I knew we were going to be fine. Right. But, but it's fucking... Like as soon as we like, it's panic mode. They asked me, "Were you in there smoking?" I don't smoke. I, do I look like I smoke? I'm all healthy and shit, right? Yeah. Like I'm just trying to. As <laughs> oh. soon as it landed, I walked off the airport thinking they were going to arrest me when it landed for sure, right? Right. And because there was when I sat down, there was an old lady on the other end of the row, and she looked at me and she saw me throw the weed pen in between the chairs, and I'm thinking, "Don't you fucking say nothing, goddamn no, it! Don't please don't tell me. <laughs> if I go down, I'm gonna hit you on the way down, damn it!" <laughs> and 
And so I'm thinking, man, as soon as we get there, she's going to snitch on me and I'm not going to. So then the next time I'm like, you know what? Maybe I'll just fly private. And then I got the bill for that was like 40 or 50 grand. I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be able to regularly afford this. That's just a ridiculous amount of money. Uh-huh. So I started inviting people on Facebook. Hey, if uh, I'm going from Dallas to California, I'm going to be there for two days. I have a private jet, a Gulfstream 4, Gulfstream 5, Falcon 900, something like that. Yeah. If you want to go, it's 6500 bucks, And I can take eight of you guys. And so you, you split, split the cost for them. We'll mastermind in the air. We'll have a good time. If I'm speaking at an event, I'll get you guys all tickets to the event. Yeah. And so... It's a win-win for them because they get $1,400 VIP tickets to an event. They get to fly on a private jet. I give them business advice while we're in the air. Oftentimes, we end up recruiting them into one of our programs or partnering up with them or doing sure. business with them. So I have not stepped foot on a commercial airline since 2020. And I've taken about 50 or 60 of these flights where I've had other people pay in with me to where you know, my costs are five or six grand to go on the flight as opposed to $40,000. I've been able to do it consistently without a problem. I I just put out a post three days ago where I'm going to Scottsdale from Dallas in December and we sold it out within five minutes. Wow. So that's huge. And that turned into Cabo, that turned into other events and it's literally become a little trade cottage industry for them. Well, it started that time at Jeff, your partner. Uh, Well, that time at Jeff. So I ran a contest And uh, maybe I had known him a little bit before that, but this is how I really got to know them. And I ran a contest where if you buy Apex, I would put your name in a drawing. So I needed to go to Berkshire Hathaway and there were no flights to the shareholder meeting. Right. So I had to get a private, had to charter something private to get there. I don't know shit. I got a King Air. We could have died in that thing. But anyway, (laughs) right. It was my first time. I felt fancy as hell. (laughs) I felt fancy as hell until I landed in Omaha, Nebraska, next to Bill Gates, Prince Halloween, Ben, like all the, like, dude, our shit. I might as well have shown up in the Fred Flintstone mobile (laughs) at the exotic car show. I wasn't in shit, bro. Like, you think you talk about you think you got like my ego uh, was like i'm the man yeah, oh yeah. shit i'm poor white trash still uh, right uh, fuck i can't get ahead uh, so so i did this drawing and it was like everybody joined the thing whatever the cost was and then i, I drew four names out of the hat to go to nebraska with me and jeff was one of them no shit. And i was like I wow i paid that. for a private jet ride one time jeff went with me to the bahamas right private jet from tampa to the bahamas for a mastermind in bahamas and i came back it worked really well. I made like 10 grand from doing the run. I go and I sell new people the same run the next month. I show back up from the Bahamas. We left one guy there. He had so much fun in the Bahamas. He's like, ah, fuck it. I'll just fly my wife. And it was Ron Sell, you know. Yeah, him. Yeah. He's like, I'll just fly my wife into the Bahamas and I'll stay, here. stay so, here. Okay, cool. So we go back and we land. And then like, I'm looking and like every three letter acronym government agency in the world is outside this building. And, and we pull up and I'm like, shit, wonder who fucked up. Oh shit, I hope I didn't mess up. Right. Oh man, they're walking over here. Oh shit. Yeah. And the, the pilot opens the door and the dude from the Department of Homeland Security sticks his head and he goes, which one of you guys is stupid? It's like, fuck. Oh no. So since so in this plane, there happened to be a chick that was a sniper. It is a sniper part-time for the US government. A dude that has a, a license to own uh, automatic firearms another firearm carrier, like a concealed carry permit holder, two felons. The only clean person that wasn't a gun or a drug person was Ron that we left in the Bahamas. <laughs> and we just left them off the manifest. We'll explain it when we get back, right? I love it. So these guys are convinced that last month we made a gun run, it went well. This month I made another gun run and we had to kill Ron over in the Bahamas and he's missing. No. Oh, dude, oh, yeah. they are this fuck, is unreal. They are fucking convinced, not, bro. Yeah, this is true I'm, story. I'm, I'm in, I've got pictures. I'm in the like the, the interview room and I think, I'm just there to do a mastermind, man. My clients are all like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm like, I don't know. We were all held up for like six hours. No way. And then when we left, the pilot is a Hispanic dude. Okay. This is funny, right? Pilot's Hispanic (laughs) dude. He thinks they're profiling him because he's a Mexican pilot. (laughs) So he thinks all these white agency (laughs) people are are racist. So he's cussing them out in every language. And he don't know that we got this whole, because he wasn't in the interrogation room. So he's pissed them off. Now they're trying to pull the nose of his jet off, saying there might be drugs in there or some shit just to fuck with him, knowing there's not. And he's yelling at them. And finally, they're like, Mr. Stuman, you know, you can wait on the plane. I'm like, okay, cool. So I'm probably about to get out of here. They sent my other guy, the only other felon. He's the one that was going to the next stop with me, too. And they sat him on the plane. 
And then this 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 Mexican guy is screaming at him. He shuts the door and lock. He goes, fuck it, we're out of here. And just cranks up the jet and leaves. When we landed in Fort Lauderdale, I thought, for sure, I'm going to have to deal with these motherfuckers again. I called Uber when we were like at 5,000 feet, bro, just yeah. trying to get there, man. <laughs> like, just trying to time it yeah, just right. Just you know, like, there, get yeah. the fuck out of you there. You know how I know this is a true story, and you probably don't remember this, but that first trip that I met you when we were landing... I look out at the car, oh, yeah, Mac, and there's fucking 20 car, cop cars out I there. Forgot. And I had just helped put my partner in prison. So I'm looking at him. I'm like, hey, guys, I'm sorry. I'm the only scumbag on this plane. His wife looks at me like, no, honey, this is for Ryan. I'm like, I'm sure. <laughs> my dude, it's fucking 20 degrees outside. I'm the only scumbag on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the ATF boards the plane, asks for everybody's oh. passport. They make everybody depart the plane. We're freezing our nuts off. I remember Amy that. looks at you and goes, Fucking right. <laughs> oh, wow. You remember that? Now I've done it enough to where I, I'm <laughs> good. But in yeah. the, the first yeah. few times I yeah. crossed out of the country, yeah. it was a big deal. Remember they thought Drewby, because Drewby used to be fat, yeah. And he lost all the weight, so now yeah. he's like really good looking and, and in good shape. But his, like his, driver, yeah. his driver's license says Andrew, and he's like 200 pound guy, oh, right? Yeah, or like a 300 pound yeah. guy. And we don't know he's Andrew. We just call him Drewby. <laughs> and so we're trying to explain to the police that he's, he's like, and he's clearly not a Mexican. He's white as snow, right? So, <laughs> so we're trying to explain to him that he didn't just come over here from Mexico. He's you know, he's yeah, his name's Drewby. Like, what does he look like? He's from Ohio. Well, <laughs> right? oh, who's Andrew Wilson? We're like, who yeah, who is Andrew oh, Wilson? Oh, I don't even know who that oh, is. Oh. Right, I knew that this could last hours, man. Before we go, a couple things. If you could look into that uh, camera, please, and there's somebody at home right now, or there's somebody listening, or there's somebody on, on YouTube, and they just heard about you for the first time, maybe they're going through a struggle, what piece of advice would you give them in a couple minutes about what they could do to kind of fix their life, turn it around, and kind of emulate the lifestyle that you got now, brother? Well, it's like I was saying, when, when I got out of prison that second time, I knew that was the bottom and I couldn't go any lower. So if you're there, perfect. Congratulations. The next thing is I knew that if I was just willing to work, I could outwork any of my problems. So if you, everything that you want is on the other side of where you want to quit. And I was mentored by David Goggins for a period of time. And a lot of Navy SEALs will tell you that when the mind or the body wants to quit, you're only at 40% capacity. So when you're out there starting that business or when you're trying to push through that marriage or when you're trying to be a good father or mother for your kids and you think you're about to quit, you're only 40% of what's possible. You've got to push through that to get into that true unlimited force of power that you have within you. And so the, the force of average on this planet is going to try to hold you down. It's going to try to keep you at even levels. And if you're going to chase greatness, you're going to battle it over and over again and the best way to beat it is to just stay focused and never quit i mean i can't tell you how many times in this business whether it being filthy rich or poor that i've wanted to quit but but just thank god something inside me is, is keeps me going no matter what the struggles are and and for me i think every day that's people saying hey you inspire me hey I was going to quit because of you, hey, I, I, I just got out of prison and now I'm at your event. Hey, we were watching your stuff in prison. I'm excited to be able to see it in real time on Instagram. So, so wherever you're at, whatever you're going through, the best piece of advice for you is that the struggle makes you stronger. I love man, it, man. Thank you so much. Let's that round of applause, man. That's awesome. You know, there, people heard us talk about Jeps. Jeps. <laughs> Jets. They heard about, you know, the first time I met you and maybe they can't afford 10, 25,000. Give them a little quick overview about the programs, the different levels, because I've literally seen you pull people out of the gutter. I've seen people that have their last time like I did come to you, but they didn't come in at the top. You have multiple levels. How can they find out about that? What's the best way to learn more? Yeah, you can go to jointheapex.com in our, our beginner program to get you started in the family. It's only $289 a month. And it may sound like a lot, but it's a business write-off. It's an investment in yourself. And surely you and I and this massive network of people and this massive academy of online information can find you $1,000 or more a month. And the truth is, if you come ride with us, you become a better person. And when you become a better person, you become a better business person. You become a better parent. You become a better leader. You become a better manager, become better in fitness, you become better in health. And that's what this is all about. It's just making you the best version of yourself. But you got to get started somewhere. You can't go from from zero to 100 immediately. So just step on the scale with us and get moving. Go to join the And you'll see we 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 don't let people down. If you you don't even you don't even understand that what it feels like, the amount of weight that I carry with the responsibility of knowing that there's folks out there 
that need this to work for them or it could be the end of everything. I understand that. That's why we pour our heart and soul into this and, and have for 13 years. And yeah. I will say it's not this is not a get rich quick scheme. You know, it's not somebody rah rah like, hey, you're going to do great. It's an actual step by step formula. We call it building the machine that's over a six month period. And from that point on, it's that. But I think more importantly, it's the network. You know, we talk about all these different characters, Chalmers, uh, Kuklo, and all the way all down to from CPAs. Apex. I mean, 90% yeah. of the people that I use for services from accounting all down to legal, I'll tap in there because it's kind of a, a community that protects each other. Sure. Similar to what the family that we have here, you know what I mean? You know, it, and Ryan, one more thing. If you, had to, if you could <clears throat> look in the camera and, and, and just, you know, tell your family how much you love them, you know? Is that something you could do for us? Yeah. Hey, Amy, you know I love you. Harlan, Colton, Jackson, Asher. I love you guys. Thank you for letting me come out to California. But, you know, family is important to me. It really is. It really is. I, I bought this this ranch. So this, this year was the first time that I've ever flown private with my family for a vacation. And it's just us. And we did that. And went and I used Amex points to stay at this great resort for free and the, like, yeah. the best suite and all this stuff. It's like an amazing, tremendous experience for me and my family. And we're in the plane headed on the way back. And I asked the kids, I got like Instagram up. I'm like, is this the, is this the best place you've ever been to? And my kids all went, no, we love the ranch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Isn't like, that amazing? that's really cool. Yeah. You know, the experience they have out there meant more to them than this five star resort with unlimited yeah. service that we were at in, in Mexico. It's like, you that's know, how you know they're for sure my yep. kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we like the dirt. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's funny. I, I said that to someone the other night. Someone was like, you know, let's go. Uh, what did they say? They said, let's go some, somewhere by the beach or something. And I'm like, man, let's just go camping. You know what I mean? Like, like, let's just hit the dirt and hit some, you know, go off road. And yep. like, I, I mean, it, to me, I, I, I just have so much more quality time with my friends, my family. And, uh, and I enjoy those memories far more. Generally when I'm at the resorts, I don't even remember what happened. <laughs> I was like, what happened? Exactly. <laughs> it was cool, but, uh, wait, where, where did we I stay? I think I relaxed. Yeah, I think it was cool. So yeah, it's more, you know, it seems more worky, but man, it's been an honor to have you on the show, man. Absolutely. Is there anything that you want to say before we let you get on out of here? Man, I really appreciate you guys letting yeah. me come and, and sharing your platform with me and, and being you. so generous with everything that you have. So it means a lot. I'm great to, to finally meet you too, Blue. So. Likewise, man. Thank you so much. Ryan, you know, this was the vision that I had when we started Financial Fridays. I feel like, you know, there's people that always need that one connection, that one purpose. You know, we brought on some amazing guests so far. But uh, this is the first actionable item I think we've had. You know, we've had some amazing stories that people could resonate with. Tommy Vex was on talking about suicide. We're Tommy. about to drop that episode. And, you know, I've brought on some amazing guests, I feel. Not one's better than the other. But this is the first time that I think people can actually go to a website, download something or look at something and change the trajectory of their lives the way I did. I can't tell you how much you know how much you mean to me. You've allowed me into your home. And this is the close. You know, I got a yeah. great family. You'll meet my mom and dad soon. But. This is my family now. This is your home now. So anytime you want, brother, you yeah. know, we're, we you can't wait Cali to have location. you back. Awesome. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys, we can't do this show without a gang of people. It's going to be Blue, Joe Grande, Adrian, oh. Alex C, Alex A, Mondo, Madison, Novelli, Teddy the Show Dog, Daniel Connor, Kinky Cam Baxter, good Lord, Beach Bar Solari, Ali Muffin, Sunday, Goldie, Brother Pitt, Mark Carnes, Chris Frankino, Jennifer, Erica, Elvis, we got my man Gary as well in the house now. Thank yeah. you guys for listening to Financial Fridays here on Cannabis Talk 101. With Kamisha's Blue. in the building Joe too. Joe Grande, Kamisha's in the house. We got a whole <laughs> studio audience. I mean, Thank I can't you guys. We imagine how much support. we love you guys being here. Well, guys, now, you know what we always say on the show to close it out? If no one else loves you, we, we do. do. <laughs>